What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another live episode of Ink Tank. It's me, Alex. This is actually a special Designer Con weekend edition of Sideshow's Ink Tank, and I've got Tony Riff and Paolo Rivera today. So I am extremely excited. Just to give you guys a heads up, uh, with Designer Con weekend, we have giveaways going on at our uh, Unruly Industries pages and our Designer Toy Collective uh, Facebook page. So make sure you are uh, watching and ready to go. So uh, I just want to also let you know that if you haven't seen it, check out the custom splotch exhibition that was on earlier today. Um, give you some inspiration because we actually have a custom splotch contest happening right now. Uh, we'll give you more details in the chats. So with that out of the way, I would like to welcome our first artist, London-based artist, Tony Riff. Tony Riff, what is going on, my friend? Hello, hello, hello. How's it going? How is it going over there in London? Yeah, good. Um, I'm a bit nervous, though, uh, kind of sweaty. Uh, nervous you know. and sweaty? <laughs> Who are you yeah. I, man, look at this guy. You're talking to me. You get him. Nah, forget it. You're fine. <laughs> You're totally fine. Uh, what's going on? Is it rainy over there, too? Because right now it's rainy and drippy over here. I hope, I hope I'm, you at least have the same weather over there. It's actually all right. It's not, well, as far as I can see, it's not raining, but there's a good chance it's going to start raining. I was going to say, how, we'll I've see. got your London weather right now, man. Let me tell you. That's it. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with this weather anymore, but you know, <laughs> I'm in my choice. All right. Well, listen, uh, I'm going to give you your drawing prompt. Okay. But this is what we're going to draw. Today, it's Friday the 13th. So we're going to get, we're going to keep our, that spooky energy going from, from Halloween. Yeah. And I want you to draw a werewolf. Okay. A Tony Ooh. Riff style werewolf. So sure. whenever you're ready, uh, you're doing digital today, right? That's right. Yeah. Perfect. So we're going to do some, <clears throat> some digital drawing. So while you're getting that ready, I'm going to start throwing some questions at you. So this is going to be some hard hitting questions. These are going to make you really stressed out to answer. Mm. How did you get your start drawing? <laughs> um honestly like it's a bit of a dumb answer but you know i think everyone has a point in their lives where they draw i just never stopped so that's kind of what it is you know it's just always something that i love to do and people always responded to it positively so i was like yeah i'm gonna keep on doing it yeah. um so whenever yeah, ready, uh, yeah whenever you're ready just share your screen because everyone's gonna want to watch you draw there you go is it showing now Whoa. Whoa. What's that? <laughs> there we go. So, um, so yeah, I mean like what was like, what, what, so that's what got you started. Like you've always been drawing, like what like kind of inspired you? Was it like, you know, a local artist? Was it like a, you know, some people just write it. It's comic books right off the first bat. Hmm. Um, funnily enough, I never really read the, like any comic books as a kid, you know, it was Man. all, it was all kind of just like cartoons, you know, the usual stuff. I mean, um, you know, I think at one point, you know, like Ren and Stimpy was like a huge influence of what I did in terms of like just getting expressions and like just embracing the kind of like craziness and just like just being loose with the characters and seeing where it can go from it. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can definitely see that because a lot of your, a lot of the characters that I see you draw is wild and a lot of those exaggerated features. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, exactly. Yeah exaggerated features that are like also kind of gross, which is, which is what I love, you know, with what you've been drawing, especially, uh, I mean, to talk about it a little bit, because it's not that I don't have it right next to me and it's not like it's my first unruly figure that I bought, but the IC colors figure mm. is out of control. And I was reading your description of it, how it's like, you want it to look like an old thirties cartoon, like on a bad acid trip. Oh, with the buzzer. Remember I told you about that buzzer that was going to hit? Did you yeah, hear Yeah, I mean, uh, the buzzer prophecy was uh, fulfilled. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. But, uh, but yeah, that kind of <clears throat> surrealistic mixture of like the 1930s cartoon with you, with your exaggerated features is, you know, something I love. Yeah, the weird thing is I actually did that drawing, that character, like years ago. I think it was yeah. about, I want to say 2011 or something. Dang. And yeah, it's just one of those things that kept on kind of just coming back and people just really seemed to like it. So I was like, yeah, I don't know. When when um I'm really kind of asked me like if they want to make a toy out of it, I was just like, wow, this is like it just felt yeah. like it was meant to be. So I, I just yeah. never I had no idea that at this point I would still be looking at that character. Cause 
for me, whenever I draw a character, it's like I kind of just forget about it and just move on to the next one. Right, right. I don't, I don't really kind of stick with the same thing all the time. But, but yeah, I mean, it's great how it came out. Yeah, and I mean, I know I hear from a lot of people that the Unruly people are like very easy to work with. So like translating, um, you know, the the 2D to the 3D, like was it a lot of work for you to 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 provide that for them, or or did they make that even easier for you? Because I know sometimes it's hard. Yeah, that made it super easy, honestly. Like um, on my side, I didn't really have to do that much. It was just, um, yeah, they kind of just took the original drawing, and I think they just got their people to to kind of carry on with it and like do it from different angles, draw it from different angles and kind of figure out what it would look like in 3D. But I was kind of just like, they just sent me like kind of prototypes and little kind of 3D images. I was like, yeah, cool. Maybe change that a little bit or that. But honestly, it was, it was very, it was very simple. It's like, it was very straightforward. Well, for me, it was like to do anything apart from yeah. the character, but yeah. But it has look, you know, that's that's got to be probably pretty surrealistic, you know, to see that because that, that translation that they did was really great. But you know, just I love the the art on the box because it's got your drawing right there, like bam, right in the front. So it's it's pretty great. So yeah, it's awesome. yeah. here's a question that I like to ask people: Do you have any like special processes? Like, do you have like do you usually listen to music or or movies or you know or a TV show on in the background while you draw, or do you do the complete silence thing? Uh, I don't usually do complete silence. I usually just listen to music. Um, I kind of prefer, like, if I'm drawing, like, that's usually the best time to kind of just listen to, like, stuff that I've never heard before. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of like just discovering new stuff and just kind of letting stuff play out and be like, hmm, I don't know what that is, but I kind of like it, you know, see where it goes. But, um, yeah, it's, um, I'd say it's mostly... Mostly music, never really films or anything like that. It's just a bit too distracting. <clears throat> yeah, I guess because you, yeah, you have to pay attention hard to it. But I mean, I guess, you know, it's funny because I'm thinking about it now. If you're listening to new music for, you know, while you're making a new piece, it's like now that song and that piece have like a meaning together. You know what I mean? It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, I think, um, I think a lot of what I do sometimes is, uh, is kind of fueled by certain sounds you get from music and that just like a certain vibe that a song might have, you know? So I think that's a, yeah, it plays a big role in what I do, like uh, subconsciously, I think. That's cool. That's yeah. Like the music inspires the piece, you know, you know, in, in, you know, and vice, not vice versa, not that your pieces inspire the music because the music exists, but you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. You know, it's like the, the, the music is actually that beat that whatever song it is, is kind of like putting a little soul into the piece, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, I think, um, you know, certain things where if I'm listening to something that's like really kind of out there yeah. or like kind of mellow, it'll kind of help fuel some ideas. Because a lot of the stuff I do as well, you know, kind of I like to make stuff up on the spot. And, you know, if you listen to something and it kind of sparks some ideas in your head, then even better. So now, how does where you're from, because you're, you're, you're based out of London, how's where you're from kind of inspire your style? Because a lot of people, you know, they're, they're, where they grow up kind of kind of inspires that, you know, because you have that very surrealistic, wild style. Like, how, how much of that came from where you're from? You know what I mean? Mm, I'm not sure, because um, I almost feel like most of the stuff I draw is actually inspired by, like, American cartoons, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that played a big part in how I draw, but definitely I'd say in terms of inspiration, I think... Um, you know, with London, is like, I'm sure like any other big city, you just you get loads of just different, there's always just a ton of stuff going on. It's like people from all over the place and like there's so many characters and it's like, you can just walk down the street and you'll see like some crazy stuff happening sometimes. So I think I've always been like a bit of a sponge in that way where, you know, it doesn't even have to be like visual. Could it be like, I don't know, just crazy, a weird like conversation people are having or something like that. It's just anything anything could be like hmm yeah i don't know how can i translate that into a drawing with like a character or something yeah but uh, yeah i'm loving this werewolf by the way it's so wild <laughs> and so creepy man I'm, I'm absolutely i'm absolutely loving this uh uh he is out of his gourd he is out of his gourd because it'll, you know and i'm also thinking about the uh the bonehead piece that's that's out 
uh, that yeah. you did. Like that is, that is some creepy, but also really funny with, uh, and also like graffiti inspired as well. Yeah, I mean, I think like again, like I said, sorry, I can't talk. Like I said before, um, with me being like almost like a sponge, you know, I think I've been lucky enough where I've met so many different artists that do like loads of different kind of things, you know, you know, graffiti artists or you know, fine artists or I don't know, sculptures or whatever like that. So it's always been, yeah, I've always like try not to just stay in one lane, you know. Obviously I've got my own thing going on, but in terms of the style of characters I do and what they might look like, I always try to switch it up a little bit. And, you know, I don't, not everything has to be like super dark all the time or like super creepy, but you know, I like to kind of make it light, but add like that element of slight, I guess slight dark twist as well. But this, yes, I don't, I don't really overthink it. It's just like, well, however I feel at the time, yeah. I just like, I just draw it, trial and error. Well, I do, I do appreciate that because, man, when I see something, you know, because I, I do love like exact depictions of characters and and, mm. and ideas. But when you have something that is surrealistic and strange, you know, you get to put your own little interpretation on that. So I do appreciate seeing that from, uh, you know, from a different point of view. You know, for every artist has their own point of view. Yeah, and like you know, I think that's my favorite thing about just art. You know, it's like you can. You know, like for a werewolf, for example, and there's like a million ways you can draw it, you know, there's like, yeah. it's not one way or there's no right way or wrong way. And everyone has got their, <clears throat> so everyone's got their own thing. Yeah. We have a question from Facebook from Eric. Do you have any favorite uh, local eats in the UK? <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's a good spot. Um, so where I work <laughs> is in an area called Dalston. And there's a place there called Beer and Burger, which I used to go to quite a lot. Really good burgers, obviously beer as well. Good combo. Yeah. Recommend it. Oh, there you go, Eric. When you're there, what is it called again? Uh, beer and Burger. Very beer, and, beer and Burger. So, Very I mean, generic name. <laughs> I mean, it's perfect because now you go there, you know what you're getting. There's no, there's no surprise. You know what I mean? If you went in there and they were selling pizza, that would be like a whole different story. Yeah. But then again, maybe the pizzas would be like amazing. Like, yeah. <laughs> right it's like a bait and switch you come in there for like the best pizza in the uk and it's cold beer and burgers yeah that's it you know gotta keep them uh gotta keep them guessing so uh so with the lockdown right there's been lockdown everywhere for the pet this has been the the worst year uh with with lockdown and everything just so much boredom uh uh you know closing in what have you been doing like what have you been doing what have you been watching what have you been listening to that uh that's been keeping you sane um honestly i'm the worst when it comes to watching stuff like i'll i'll watch like in one episode like a week and then i'll just like kind of drift out of it so honestly like i'm kind of boring in that way where i draw like a lot like outside of my day job when i get home i'm like either doing my own stuff in my sketchbook or i'm doing small little freelance jobs here and there so yeah, I'm just constantly drawing. Like it's. Uh, but listen, no we're not complaining. No, no one's complaining that all you're doing is drawing. You know, because we, yeah, you know, I mean, we're enjoying the work. Oh, we got Robert from Facebook asked, "What is your favorite burger topping?" So you brought up burgers. Now you're going to get a lot of burger questions. Yeah, get, yeah, getting all the burger questions out. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, Mm. See, when it comes to burgers, I'm very, I don't like too much going on. I feel like it pretty simple, just like, it's like a simple cheeseburger, you know. I feel like it's almost the same with pizza, where it's like, you can tell it's a really good pizza if like, you just get a margarita, or something really simple, yeah. and that's all you need. There's like no, there's no fancy stuff, just boom, you know it again. So, not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna harass you too much about that because I'm a New Yorker, right? So it's like I'm in New York. Oh, so right. I'm, I see, like, yeah. I'm not gonna harass you too much because you, <laughs> you know, you don't have the opportunity that some, you know, out here we ha people have the opportunity to have New York pizza, mm. you know, but they choose otherwise. I'll, I'm gonna forgive you on that. I'm gonna forgive you for that. You know, what? I've, never, I've never been to New York. <clears throat> when this is all over, my friend, you are coming to New York 
and I'm going to take you on the pizza tour of New York. It's going to happen. Everyone who tunes into me doing live streams at Sideshow knows that I talk about New York pizza all the time. I will take you on a pizza tour. Okay. Were you convention like a fan of conventions like b before all this happened? Not really. Like I don't think I've really. Well, I wouldn't say I've. Well, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of just indifferent. Like I just never just thought of going to one. But the idea of it would be fun. But I think on my side, it's just like I can't remember. Yeah, I haven't been to any conventions or anything. It's just <laughs> it's just one of those things I just never thought of going to one. It's just. Oh my goodness. Well, I don't know, man. We're going to we, listen when this is all over. I'm telling you, mm. these, these are the list of things I'm putting on your list. You're going to come to the States. You're going to okay. come to New York and go on a pizza tour. And we're, we're going to go to some cons because this is designer con week, man. And, and I'm missing it. And I want you to go to designer con next time. Yeah, I love it. I mean, real New York, New York pizza. Maybe get a real New York bagel. Oh, what? dude, don't get me started. Don't get me started. My 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 friend my friend uh, Jason, you know he he's from uh, out, of, out you know he's not from New York, but he's always like, oh yeah, you guys eat your water over there. You're always talking about your bagels. <laughs> we got another question from Eric. Do you collect anything? Mm, nah, like um, nah, I don't, I don't like I'm. Do you know what? I'm just I'm I'm very I travel light. Like I don't yeah. I don't have that much stuff. Like, um, so I've always been that way. I think like every time I move, I end up like just getting rid of stuff. So I just don't like to be like, I don't like a lot of clutter. So it's like a very, it's weird. It's like, it's like the opposite of like how my work is where it's just kind of a bit all over the place or whatever, but I'm very, very minimal in the Zen, I guess. But I mean, that's cool though, because I mean, it's like, you know, like the, the, the <clears throat> dichotomy, right? I mean, like, listen, you sit there and you, you put all this chaos into your artwork, you know, listen at home, you want to relax. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, uh, duality of man. And all yes. Yeah. Let me tell you, by the way, as a person who has moved a lot as well, I mean, and I'm a collector of things. I, mm -hmm. I applaud your sense of, uh, <laughs> your sense of, of focus on that, because let me tell you something, man, packing up like. 700 you know books and like yeah, five thousand yeah. small toys and like try not to damage anything it's a nightmare so I, I applaud your idea you know keep it simple you know keep yourself from going crazy that's it i mean i think the only thing i collect really are like <clears throat> sketchbooks like i just have loads of loads of sketchbooks that like i've just drawn in from the years and like you know i get very sentimental about them it's like even though even though once i draw something i tend to kind of move on to the next thing you know sometimes i'll move not me. Sometimes I'll like go back to like older stuff that I've drawn. It's like, oh, you know, like it reminds me of this time or that time. So I guess that's the only thing I really collect. Yeah, I mean, because like you know, sketchbooks, artists, and 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 even your own art. It's like a, it's like a, it's a point in time you can remember. I mean, what are some of your favorite artists that you collect those those books from? Yeah. Uh, favorite art. Um, see, this is a hard one because like I feel like it changes from like. Week to week, you know, I, I kind of blame I blame Instagram for that. Like my attention oh, yeah. span is just like, because like every day you're like seeing some new person that's like insanely talented, and you know, it's just hard to keep up. So I kind of just draw a blank when people kind of ask me for like a specific person. Yeah. But, um, plus, I feel bad because I'm like I mentioned one person. I'm like, there's like a million <laughs> other, like you know. Listen, that's what the rest of this this interview is going to be. I want you to name literally every single artist that you like on Instagram. That's that's going to be the new that's going to be the new test. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I ain't going I ain't going to plan it tonight, you know. Why not? <laughs> You're not going anywhere, right? Everything's on lockdown. What else are you going to do? This is you know, that's it. The, the next 2 hours is going to be your list of artists. By the way, I'm this this werewolf man is wild. I can't wait. Uh, so we're gonna collect this soon, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this into a toy myself. I think I'm gonna learn how to digitally sculpt so I can make this guy. Yeah, I mean, love to see it. What What's the B stand for? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna go. I was kind of going for like an varsity jacket thing, but I might just get rid of that. I don't know. I was kind of just. No, man. He's big and bad. Maybe he goes to big bad school. Yeah, uh, I don't know I'm not much of a planner when it comes to these yeah. kind of these drawings. 
But that's good though, because you know that kind of feeds into like like we were talking about the chaos and everything. Because just to you know, for bringing it on screen for everyone else again, my this this icy colors figure man is like this is one of the first ones I got in the mail from Unruly and. Mm -hmm the chaos in it, man, with the splashing, with the colors splashing up on it. And this, the sweat coming off his face and just like in the drawing, man, that drawing is like out of control with that. Yeah. yeah I I was a, he's sweating sorry. with fear. I love it. Yeah. I was just super impressed with how, <clears throat> how close I got it. to like the original. Yeah. It's pretty spectacular. Pretty spectacular. Thank you to the, uh, the sculpting team on that. Man, I'm just like kind of mesmerized by this drawing right now. So I'm all like, what? What's going on? So, I mean, um, is there like a, um, a movie that you can think of in the back of your head that's kind of like stuck in your mind that maybe impacted some of the art that you've done in the past? Because, I mean, right now I'm thinking, again, Friday the 13th, I'm thinking scary movies. We're doing a scary werewolf. I don't know if you're into horror or anything like that. See, I, I'm, I kind of am like, I think low key, I kind of am into horror. Like I never, I never label myself as like a horror guy, but yeah. I'd say the first film that really left like a big impact on me was um, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. Like when I saw that, I was like, wow. Like just, you know, I think any film like kind of like a crazy kind of like creature in it or something like that, that's what always, Piques my interest. So yeah, that was like the first one I saw where it's just like, this crazy. I mean, I was way too young when I saw it, but. Like, I, I don't think, I think we all were way too young when we saw it. Cause I saw that thing when I was, I saw the thing yeah. when I was like, what? Seven years old, man. Seven years old. My brother was older. So he would always put the horror movies on and my mom mm -hmm. would, you know, my parents would be asleep. My brother would be like, come on, let's watch this movie. And then I'm watching the thing scared out of my mind, poltergeist, all these movies I watched when I was a little kid too, and scared the hell out of me. But I mean, I could see the thing, you know, being one of those movies that, that, you know, kind of inspires that fear because of the chaos, you know, the chaos mm -hmm. what kind of, where, where did I put the emphasis on that word? The chaos, <laughs> you know, that, that kind of works with your art. You know what I mean? Yeah, but well, like I think just the fact that like in terms of like, the creature in it, like it is always, it didn't really make sense. It was always just like just this crazy kind of stuff everywhere. And I kind of like, I kind of like drawing those characters where there's certain things about like the way it's proportioned or whatever that like, kind of doesn't really make sense, but it does, and you kind of tell what's going on, but you, but you kind of can't at the same time. So I kind of like kind of seeing how I can push that. And uh, yeah, plus is really bad at drawing anatomy. So that's <laughs> you know that, that helps too, right? If you draw things that don't have normal anatomy, right? And that's the kind of thing. And plus gross, because I do love when you add gross stuff like you know, pointy, gross yellow toenails and stuff to a to a drawing. Oh, Annie on Facebook wants to know uh, your favorite childhood cartoon. Now, I know we talked about Ren and Stimpy, but did, are there are other other ones. Uh, I'd say. Honestly, even if like Ren and Stimpy, it was like, I think it was more um, the style of it that I liked the natural show. But mm -hmm. I think I do remember, well, what would I know? Um, I do remember liking um, Rocco's Modern Life a lot. That was a really good one. Oh, uh, man. Cow and Chicken. That was like, that was another really good one. That's super, super funny. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel like most people my age, like in the 30s, bracket they kind of just grew up with like the same kind of set of cartoons that kind of just molded molded them you know dexter's lab as well that's another good one yeah i mean i'm 41 so i mean i watched all those cartoons am i too old for that was i too old to be watching those cartoons i don't know man spongebob squarepants rocco's modern yeah. life i ain't gonna judge you Rug rugrats you know what i mean like all that weird mm. and they all had that strange anatomy like you said too you know what i mean nothing was normal about the way they uh about the way they drew or acted those are some uh, nonsense characters that they made. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I think, you know, that story just left a massive impression in terms of like what I do now. And, yeah. you know, I think it, it'd be hard for me to like not have that kind of like that side of like my inspiration kind of like just appear in like any character that I do. <clears throat> oh my goodness. 
you can, this guy's like a drool. Uh, it's funny because I'm sitting here and no one can see this on screen. I'm using my mouse to point at things and no one can see it. I'm just like looking at, <laughs> no one can see my mouse, but I'm just looking at this dripping tongue out of here. And it just kind of reminds me of, like you said, that exaggerated grossness that we were talking about before. And like you said, with the, with the Ren and Stimpy style, with that, with that chaos coming out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Ooh, just, like, like chaos again. Did I say chaos or did I say chaos? Uh, I think it's a chaos. Everyone's going to be laughing at me, making fun of the way I say things now, as if my New York accent wasn't bad enough. <laughs> so, ooh, sorry, I'm just like fascinated with the art. So I get, I'm, I get all confused because I'm sitting there. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be asking questions, but at the same time, I'm like staring, staring at you drawing. I'm kind of glad because I find it really hard to talk and draw. <laughs> <gasps> Am I interrupting oh, you? Oh no! Oh, no, 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 no! I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet. Hold on. Let me put on my. One of my weird hats, so you're not, so I'm not distracting you. Oh my goodness, no! But it's you know, listen. That's my job. My job is to put you on edge. My my job is to stress you out. Yes, you know, add a add a bit of tension. So, um, let me ask you this: If you could draw, mm. here's the: If you could draw for any cartoon, right? Any modern, anything. If you could draw for any cartoon, what would you draw? Like, like a cartoon that's out there. Like, what would you draw for them? Like, what, what would be the one you'd want to draw for? Mm. Water. Yeah, I can guess what. Um, I almost feel like just going somewhere totally left field and just saying something Do it. like, I Do don't it. know. Do like it. Bob's Get weird. Burgers, Bob's Burgers or something. Bob's <laughs> Burgers. Um, no, no, realistically, I think uh, maybe, I think it'd be fun to like design aliens for like Rick and Morty. I think that'd be fun. Like just, oh, doing, that, just doing that all day. I mean, that, that would definitely tie into your style. I mean, sheesh, Rick and Morty. I mean, I, you know, drawing someone who's constantly burping and, and, and belching would be perfect. But all those aliens that they drew, especially what was that? What was that one episode where they had the, the, the whole, uh, the Cronenberg, the Cronenberg? <laughs> world? Yeah, yeah, like, like something like that. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be right up your alley, man. I, I, I love that I keep distracting you, even though you told me I'm distracting you. <laughs> I didn't mean to be rude when I said that. It's just, no, uh... I'm kidding, man. <laughs> it's impossible to be rude to a New Yorker, my friend. If you if you literally just walk by here and punch me in the face, it would be like, yeah, cool. Totally normal. Okay. Totally normal. So when so, you invite me to New York, you won't be offended if I if I punch you in the face. With it. I li I would if you didn't, that would be considered rude by our standards. You know what I mean? Listen, okay. this this is not London, man. This is this is this is New York. Pe people push old ladies in the snow to catch a cab out here. Come on, that's that's how we that's how we roll. Although I think I think since the lockdown, there's no old ladies trying to get in cabs. So we, we you know we've been all right on that on that aspect. I mean, who who's who are you going to push out of the way then? I mean, that's uh that's the question. Exactly. There's no one to push. Oh, we got a question. If if Tony Riff had his own original cartoon, what would it be named? That's the question we got. What would what would you name your original cartoon? Ooh, um, really putting you on the spot because now you got to stop <laughs> everything you're doing. Full focus. <laughs> uh, Tony Riff the cartoon. Um, Tony Riff the cartoon. Done. Would you be in it, or would it be all original characters? Um, nah, I don't think it'd be all original characters. Um, maybe, maybe it'd be like Quantum Leap, where like every episode is like <laughs> I just like turn into a different character or something, you know? Dude, and and he's hoping that this leap will be into his normal human body again. I love it. Oh, someone AJ said uh, Wild Riffs. That's that's his that's his riff on your. Uh, on your on your cartoon title yeah let's go with that dude i like this concept though that like every episode you have to so who would your al be oh um I'm, see I'm, you know we're still we're still figuring that out um you know talking to the writers about that right now i mean my uh, name is alex i could be your al look yeah, at that yeah no i was thinking the character would have a beard as well so you know that that works yeah oh and and, and uh and Paolo wants to know who's your Ziggy. Who's who's gonna be <laughs> your Ziggy? <laughs> um, I think Ziggy's just gonna be like a really old, like shitty calculator. That's yeah, gonna be that's what it's gonna be like an Some old like nineteen eighties one. 
Yeah, but like googly eyes, like take it. <laughs> Dude, I listen, this pitch is working. Everyone, we just letting you know, I didn't want to make you nervous. We actually mm. have Cartoon Network is watching this right now for your pitch idea. So we're gonna get this rolling. It's gonna be it's gonna be you, it's gonna mm. be me as as Al, and I'm gonna have my little Ziggy, fake Ziggy calculator. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's got a hit real over it, you know. That's uh you can't fail. Yeah. Oh, wait, uh, we got Susan in the chat saying riffs stiffs, uh, Lydia saying riff raff, uh, Cassidy saying get rifty. Oh my gosh. People are really <laughs> jumping on board this show, man. We, we have to give the people what they want. This is it. Yeah. So, I mean, we're going to be wrapping up shortly. I just, before we go, is there anything you want to plug yourself? Anything else that's going on that you want people to know about? Um, let's see. Um, apart from that, you know, I have no internet in my house right now. It sucks. So, uh, appreciate internet, you know, make the most out of it. Um, <laughs> also follow me on at Tony Riff. I'm not on Twitter or anything like that. I don't know. I don't really, I don't like Twitter that much. So, uh, yeah, yeah just follow me on Instagram if you want. Uh, buy the unruly IC colors figure. Which is also a skate. Here's a shameless plug. It's also a skate deck and okay. also a uh, 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 bonehead. So that's it, and bonehead as well. So this is yes. Tony. It was awesome having you on here. I love this pitch. Uh, I'll see you in the next uh, in the next uh, roundtable reading for our first episode. And okay. uh, you know, when you come to New York, man, and when I come to London, you, I'm going to eat at this beer and burger pizza pizzeria that you got, and you're going to come and I'm going to take you on a pizza tour, my friend. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right. Thank you, my friend. And I'll see you hopefully soon. Take care. Have a good one. All right. How awesome was that werewolf? That werewolf was wild. I, I, I love his style. Obviously, I went on and on about it. But, uh, you know, what am I going to do? I'm a, I'm a creepy fanboy. Um, and up next, I just want to talk to to you real quick. Comic book art. I love comic books. I'm a comic book freak. And to have a, this comic book artist on is, I'm a little nervous. I don't know if you could tell. Uh, I'm just going to bring him on. Paulo Rivera, what is going on, my friend? How are you? Hi, I'm good. Hi. How are you? Uh, I'm nervous, man. I'm very excited Don't to have nervous. you on here. Listen, Don't be nervous. I've been I was wiping already nervous all day. What are you doing? Wiping butts all day. Oh, good. You've been wiping butts all day. I mean, I have to. Look, I'm bringing. I got. I got my own like fake toys all over the place. I have a life size gremlin that I that I dress up. That that's my fake children. So <laughs> that works. So, that works. So um. I just wanted to say real quick because you just had that new alien print announced. Yeah. I just can we talk about Alien and Aliens real yeah, quick? It's one of my favorite movies, if if not my top. Yeah. It is one of my favorite and and I just I'm sorry this is going to turn into an alien conversation because it is yeah, one yeah, of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> yeah. We recently had like a, you know, during Spooktacular last week, we recently had, a, you know, everyone's like talking about their favorite monsters. They were like, what's your favorite? I'm like Xenomorph. Yeah. Done. So, I mean, you're clearly a fan. I mean, there's, what's some uh, Paolo Rivera trivia about why, how big of a fan you are of Alien? Oh, uh, I mean, there's just one piece. Uh, and I can't believe my wife let me do it. My children named Ripley and Bishop. I freaked out by that, man. I like completely freaked out when I saw those names. I was like, oh my God, simpatico, my friend. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I'm surprised she let me do it. Bishop was actually her idea. So yeah. uh, I, I married the right person for sure. You did. Let me tell you something. Ripley yeah. and Bishop, I mean, <laughs> you no better names. So yeah. now, but now I have to give you a, a drawing prompt before I forget because I'm going to go off the rails and completely forget while I fanboy. Okay. Um, it's either going to, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to make you just draw a slasher. Like, it's Friday the 13th, draw some murderer. How does a that make murderer? you feel? Yeah, some crazy slasher. Uh, okay. Or would you rather draw some scary alien monster? I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll let you choose which one. This is tough. Yeah, I'm a tough guy. Uh, I, yeah, listen, I put dude. you on the spot. And meanwhile, we can BS while you, while you get you know while you get your drawing together. Look at it; you already got it. It's already done. No, no, I'm 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 drawing until I see something. All right, that's a good strategy. So, um, softball question: How did you get your start okay. drawing? It's the easiest one. Uh, well, so I I grew up in my parents' art supply shop, mm. 
And uh, so, you know, I, I had a lot of, you know, art supplies, obviously, but uh, beyond that, I just had a lot of time. Uh, so I had to just kind of sit, sit in the corner and just be quiet. And so that was the best, best thing to do to keep me occupied. Uh, and, you know, not everybody had iPads back in the day. I was trying to explain that to my kids. Um, they have no <laughs> idea. Just, yeah, I couldn't just watch whatever you wanted at any time. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just, I had a lot of time and I had a lot of uh, materials and I had a lot of paper. I mostly drew on foam core when I was really little, and then they started giving me the, the unlimited sketchbook, which was nice. I don't. If, I think I'm drawing a woman. I don't know. That's fine. Uh, well, I, I have no idea. Listen, <laughs> you drew. Listen, I'm, you I'm drew, thinking, I gave you a prompt. This is this is your interpretation. Oh, that, you know. Okay, I I know what I know what I'm drawing. So, one time, after I saw, I was with my friend. We went to go see the Blair Witch Project. Oof, uh, and yeah. It was, I guess, was that 1999? We I think so. Out, we were pulling out of the, out of the, uh, so I lived in Daytona Beach and we went to the AMC. Oh, let me, okay. Sorry, I got to get my colors right. <laughs> so we, we pull, we pull out of, the movie theater the parking lot. We just seen it, you know, it's a good movie, but that was awesome, whatever. And we're at the back of the theater pulling onto this kind of like, it was a, a, a big road, but like a desolate part of it. And there's, it's actually, it's right by the Daytona Speedway. Okay. Yeah. And there's this, there's this moat and it's down about 10, 10 feet. And, and my friend, uh, he's driving and we pull out onto the road and the lights are on and I see something flash in this moat. And, and I'm like, dude, 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 dude. Back I'm up. sweating by the way. I'm sweating. This story's already gone. Yeah, I, 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 I was too. I was like, dude, back up. And he's like, what? Don't, you know, we just seen the Blair Witch Project. He's like, don't mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, seriously, back up. And so he, he backs up. And because I had seen this glint of light from the water. And we back up. <laughs> and as as he, he reverses, we see this woman. Oh god. In the moat. Oh god. And the flash I had seen was either goggles or glasses. And she lifts up and you know, she she was partly in the water. And partly not in the water. So in my mind, like, she's just dripping. She probably wasn't as wet as I thought. <laughs> but I said, back up, back up, back up. And then I saw her and he saw her. And we were like, go, 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 go. <laughs> and, and this is what I, this is what I saw. You're, so you're drawing us your, your imaginary drawing, murderer. Yeah. So this is behind the Daytona Speedway. And she this had a bag. She had, she was holding a bag. So she's probably like, I don't know, collecting cans. Yeah. I hope. No, <laughs> I, I like this. The, the, what was it? The Daytona. The, the, the Daytona this is 500. Daytona. Or da yeah, Daytona International Speedway. It's, it's right by the movie theater. Uh, it's like this is the, there's this uh, road in between the two, and a moat uh, that separates this speedway from you know. And so there's there's like foliage everywhere. We're, we're writing a movie right now. We're, we're, listen. The Daytona Speedway Slasher or the Daytona Speedway Swamp Witch. This is this is yeah. amazing. I love this that's version. What, that's that's exactly what it looked like. And you know what I, what I saw? It was pitch black. Yeah. The, you know. So the the only reason we saw her is because the lights of the of the car hit her glasses or goggles. Yeah. And because uh, it it was you know it was the middle of the night. Uh, the, the movie got out, out after midnight. What a ter what a terrifying experience. I would yeah, no, it's obviously, you know, I'm just kind of like, I was just putting marks on paper and then I see that hair and I'm like, it's her. You. She's back. Yeah. She's yeah. back. She's haunting you. She's going to be coming for you in your dreams. Oh God. Ooh. All right. So, um, before I get, in, I have a couple of Facebook questions for that. I want to ask, um, 
as an artist, because you're, you're, you do a lot of work for comics industries, how did you get into that? Because a lot of aspiring artists want to get into the comic industry. So how did that, uh, how was that path for you? Oh, uh, so I, when I was in high school, I went to Megacon in Orlando and I met Jim Kruger and Alex Ross and they signed all of my Earth X and wow. all of my, <laughs> both my parents were with me. They carried all my books and waited in line with me. And uh, I, I kept in contact with Jim Kruger after that and did some work on his, uh, his creator owned stuff. And like over the years, like, then, you know, they went, I went to uh, RISD, uh, Rhode Island School of Design and still did more work for him. Just kind of like when I could, I was, I was even slower than I am now. And uh, eventually he brought me into Marvel to uh, kind of show off my portfolio. And I, my portfolio was like all the work I had done for him. So it was, mm -hmm. it was this kind of, you know, I wasn't a professional, but I seemed more professional than I was. So, you know, I met him, I did my first work for him when I was 19 and I started working for Marvel when I was 21. Wow. So it was, it was a few years, but I was doing work for, for Jim the whole time. And so, you know, he introduced me to, he didn't introduce me directly to Casada, but he gave me Casada's contact info and Casada got back to me the next day and basically said, you're hired. And, you know, the, <laughs> I've been working ever since. Uh, That's so, pretty yeah, great. It was just a, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Like, you know, I couldn't have dreamt <laughs> for a better uh, intro to the industry. Uh, cause that, that kind of thing just doesn't, doesn't happen very often, but uh, right. I basically owe it all to those guys, Jim, Jim Kruger and Casada. They got me in there and kept me busy, uh, for you know, the next almost 20 years now. Wow. And you've done also other stuff outside that. Cause I mean, I'm just going to tell you that I'm a tremendous Hellboy fan. Oh, nice. <laughs> so a lot of the Hellboy stuff you did, like I wanted to, you know, like I wanted to bring it out here, but it's actually hanging on my wall in the other room is the uh, oh, awesome. Hellboy, Hellboy versus Lobster Johnson. Oh cover. yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's actually the the last one I I did. I needed I needed to do some more. Yeah, you do. By the way, this that, <laughs> that's why I said we need him on here so I can call you out and say specifically you do because that is one of my <laughs> favorite. Uh, again, being a big Hellboy fan. One of my favorite covers that has ever come out of that entire series is that specific one. So here you go, gushing like a fanboy, like I said I was going to do. Thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I love, I love working on Hellboy. I mean, there, there are. I don't think there are any comic book artists who don't love Hellboy. It, it, right. He's just the perfect, perfect comics character. Uh, and I was, it was just such a, a privilege to be able to work on him. You know, because I, I did some covers and I did. Uh, uh, three issues with Chris Roberson and yeah. uh, like a three issue mini series. And then uh, what, what was really cool is he asked me what I want to do for like a one shot. And I said, let's do Hellboy in Daytona beach. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they said, yes. So, uh, and my, my dad inked me. So, and he, he still lives there with my mom. Yeah. And so we got to do uh, uh, Hellboy in Daytona, which is, Perfect. <laughs> That's amazing. What I think you need to do now is you need to call up Mike Mignola, by the way, and you got to pinch pitch him a follow up. That's the Daytona Swamp Witch. Okay, I know. <laughs> Hellboy versus the Daytona <laughs> Swamp Witch. I, I I will make some calls, or more likely it'll be emails. But yeah, I want I want one cent for every issue sold because you know okay. it happened. Yeah. It was all it was all me. I'm taking credit for Sorry. it. <laughs> So, so quickly, some, some uh, questions from Facebook. We've got Annie from Facebook asking, any favorite horror movies aside from Alien, which is clearly the greatest of all time? Yeah. Um, let's see. I, w I was never like a huge horror fan, but I – oh, God, I know I'm forgetting something right now. You know, I, I love the thing. You know, you know what I want to see, but I haven't just for some – reason uh, i haven't seen pumpkin head oh wow and i've always i like i want to see it and i Man. don't know why i never i never got to see it uh as far as right oh uh I was, i'm trying to think uh which the witch was the most recent one i saw 
and that that was that was awesome. And the re actually the reason I saw it is because uh, Mignola uh, was going on about it on on Twitter or something, yeah. and I was like, okay, I trust that man. I I will, I will watch it, and uh, I watched it with my wife, and we we're like, that was that was. Awesome. And so you know now I I'm like, what's thou like to live deliciously? <laughs> yeah, Black Phillip is my spirit animal. Like there's a yeah. yes. I love the taste of butter. Yes, did, you've got did, that did correct. You see, uh, do, do you watch uh, what we do in the shadows? The, oh the my TV? god! Of course. So when, <laughs> when the goat is there, I, I just kissed like just perfect. Uh, Guillermo was like, "Okay, I see how it is." Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> By the way. If anyone out there has not watched what we do in the shadows, your life, I'm sorry, you are missing something in your life because it is one of the funniest and best shows yeah. out there. I, I, I was pacing myself on it. Cause I was like, this is a bad year. I need to just yeah. watch one a week to just bring my spirits up. <laughs> Guillermo, Guillermo. My last name is Guillermo, Guillermo. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is no longer Ink Tank. This is now the what we do in the shadow fan fan discussion. I mean, yeah, forget it. Yeah, I, I don't know if that counts as horror, but God, I love that show. You know what? I'm counting it. Uh, yeah, I love it. Uh, let's see, Darnell from Facebook. Do you collect anything, art, figures, or statues? All right. So, so here's here's my thing. I I want to be a collector. I have been a collector since I was a child. I still have like over 50 Ninja Turtles at my parents' house in Florida. So in order to uh, make sure I don't like go overboard, I, I buy, I don't buy hot toys. I buy hot toys accessories. So I've got like uh, Mjolnir, you know, on my, my desk is like lots of little, yeah. Um, you know, I've got, Cap's shield. I've got. Oh track. wow! From from the from the Blitzway set. <laughs> yeah, and I've got like a RoboCop gun. Wow! And not and not the not the four hundred dollar diecast. Uh, My friend's got both of those, by the way, and the seat yeah. and everything. Yeah, it's great. I mean, that's what I that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> But I know it would it would quickly uh, get out of hand. So that's yeah. that's one way I like I scratch that itch, but yeah. without spending ten thousand dollars every year. Yeah. Uh, oh, listen. I, again, like I was saying to Tony uh, earlier, is that I'm a huge collector, and it's just a pain in the neck just when you have to move and you have to wrap everything yeah. up over all over again. It's like a pain in the neck. Plus, you got two kids, and you know they love to destroy everything. Yeah, yeah. They I keep all that stuff up pretty high. I I do bring them down and let them hold them occasionally. Yeah. Just and yeah, you know, I I just quiz like, them on who belongs to what and you know. Yeah. Keep listen, keeping them educated in 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 things. I mean, do are they are they taking an interest in art as well? Yeah, actually uh just today so when I was signing in to, to uh talk to you guys, my daughter was doing a remote art class. And she drew like her best owl yet. Uh, like it's it's funny because you know I was saying with the iPad earlier, like she she doesn't draw as much as I did, and I think it's just because there's just so much other cool stuff to do. Yeah. Uh, but now that she has art class and like she has to do it, right? <laughs> she's improving very quickly because uh, it's just part of it's it's just they make it more fun for her. Uh, cause you know, I, I do worry about being like intimidating. Uh, and, and also like, she gets kind of lazy. She's just like, dad, can you draw this for me? And it's, <laughs> it's hard to say no. So, you know, so they, you hand anyway, them a finished she, comic cover and they're like, wow, great job. Yeah. I mean, one, one fun thing we do is I'll, I'll give her a drawing and then she'll ink it. And she likes doing that. Yeah. Um, but, uh. Yeah, I mean, she definitely likes doing it. It's just, it has to be part of a, a larger group or uh, like a, I think she has to know what the goal is. You know? But hey, listen, at least you're passing it on. You know what I mean? You started out in the art supplies, then you're passing it on to her. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we got more questions. Uh, M. Anthony from YouTube. What inspired you to create the central image in that alien priority one? Uh, well, I, it was actually, it was a sideshow 
uh, the the sculpture of the, the you know the one where it, he's crossing his hands. I never remember uh, that internus civitus raptus. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I know the second word is raptus. Yeah. In yeah. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Anyone who could um, say that in the audience five times fast, you're my hero. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I love that sculpture. And as soon as I saw it, I, in the back of my mind, I'd always had this idea of, of the head as the, the hypersleep chamber. Yeah. And so when I, when I saw it, you know, like this, and I imagined Ripley like this, and I, you know, I did, uh, a few different sketches to figure out how, cause at first everybody was crossing their arms as well. Yeah. And then I was like, I want to draw all his hands. <laughs> <laughs> how many and hands did you draw? It's like, no. Yeah, the, the the crew was tough, and, and actually Gracie, uh, you know, she she's the one who worked with me on, throughout. Well, basically everything I've done at Sideshow, uh, but then this one specifically, uh, she's the one who pushed me to do the whole crew because I knew I didn't have time to do it, yeah. and she's like, "You gotta, you gotta do it." <laughs> it's like fine, and so she gave me a little extra time and was able to put them all in there. Uh, but yeah, the yeah the head. Thing that that always in the back of my mind. I was just like waiting for the perfect moment, and so I, I pitched it to her after I saw your uh, the sideshow sculpture, yeah. and uh, she said, "Let's do it." She's good like that. I mean, it's good to have someone that's like in your corner, but also pushes you. You know what I mean? I mean, do you have any other? Yeah, like yeah, no, it was it was perfect, and, and that's why I've always liked working for a sideshow. Uh, you know, uh, David Igo while he, while he was still there. You know, I would I would do one sketch, and and he would see something in it that I didn't. And he said, like, let's, let's see it this way. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, it's really nice being able to work with somebody who can actually draw and like knows how to tell me what's missing or how to push it exactly. Yeah. Uh, Cause that's, that's not always the case when, when you're doing uh, stuff on, on these properties. Right. And I mean, also, do you have anyone like that? Like, cause I know like artists, you all become buddies and you all get to break each other's chops over things. Do you have any like other artist friends that like, will give you that extra, you know, like when you, when you've got a piece, you know, when you get stuck? Uh, well, I had a, I had a great time. So I, I was in Brooklyn for eight and a half years. And at that time I was living with three and then two other uh, RISD grads. And so that was just kind of like a big studio. It was a uh, graphic design major, industrial design major, and then two illustrators. Right. And so, you know, it was just really nice being able to bounce things off of each other uh, and then, you know, have a big party and, <laughs> and then uh, wake up with a hangover and then get back to work. <laughs> you know, it was, it, was, it was a good time. It was a good time. We had a, a great, you know, almost decade. We, we had to get out of there because we didn't want to be the, the 40 year old dudes, uh, you know, living four, four to a room. You know, it was a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everything like in Brooklyn girl. is is a uh, is a um, uh, studio apartment. Yeah, that we we built ourselves and, yeah. and whatnot. You have to you have to build your own walls, but that must be yeah, cool, man. Exactly. Ha having like an industrial designer, right? You get to get some of that uh, get some of that engineering uh, aspects helps you out with some, with your art, probably. Yeah, yeah, and, and actually, you know who uh, who helped us build the thing was my dad. He, my mom said, <laughs> "I'm sending your father." <laughs> <laughs> and she did <laughs> she showed up and, and it was four four boys and an old man yeah uh, <laughs> sleep, sleeping on a futon in a big uh, apartment <laughs> studio apartment and we oh framed God. it out in like 10 days and uh and we you know and then lived in it for eight and a half years oh my gosh you're braver than me you're braver than me <laughs> well if we didn't have any other option <laughs> the rent was five five hundred dollars uh, oh, a month each per person and yeah per 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 person and you know it it served us very well for many many years yeah <laughs> oh man okay we got actually a sean lee from in the let your geek side show group it says uh paula i love your your art sir i just framed up a remarked daredevil print you did for me that you put oh, the nice. shadow batman and moon knight Oh yeah, yeah, you did the. Uh, you were the one who got the three remarks on one print. Man. That was a lot of work. Thank that you. Is a, <laughs> that is a lot of work, but that's also that's pretty awesome. So, uh, Sean Lee, I actually want you to send that to me because I deserve it because I'm the one doing this interview. <laughs> Dude, this swamp monster lady is so cool. Yeah, this, 
I, I don't know if you can see this is a, this a, is hand. a hand. I've, de I've decided to go ahead, even though she may have been collecting cans or <laughs> saving an alligator, right? Like, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. This totally altruistic person that you've cast this I, horror story yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, lady. You're the one in the freaking muck after midnight behind a movie theater scaring the absolute crap out of me and my bud. Dude, this is dude, I'm not even kidding. This is this is a new comic monster. This is a new villain or creepy, scary monster in a new upcoming comic. I'm down with it. I'm already sold. I've already bought put, it. Yeah, this isn't complete until I gotta put a foot in here. Gotta put a foot. Listen, can I be the victim? Can you put like a little beard in there? Like put like a beard hanging. No, I'm just okay. kidding. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, kidding. <laughs> so so I'll listen, you've it. been You've been stuck home with uh, the, the the quarantine, right? We've all been stuck home with the quarantine. You you, you know you have yeah. the kids are home, teaching the kids from home. Uh, what what else have you been doing to keep you and the family sane? Is there anything you've 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 been watching you can recommend to our uh, our watchers that you can you know, well, that you've been watching? I, I, I mean, w when this whole thing happened, we we I was not going to get Disney Plus. Like I I was just I didn't want to give Disney any more money. I, I like taking money from Disney instead mm -hmm. of me giving it to them. Oh, they've been paying you with Marvel and stuff like that, right? Well, I mean, I used to have lots of clients, and yeah. now I just have one yeah. because they've they've purchased them all. Yeah. Uh, but it's I, pay, paychecks I, easier. I, yeah. <laughs> it, well, seriously, I, I mean, you know, that's the only name that's on my on my stubs now. But mm -hmm. when this all started, I, I was like, okay, fine. Like this is this is going to be more than a year, so we can go ahead and and buy it. And rather than buy it, because I had been buying, I still, you know, I like certain movies. I think I bought my daughter Robin Hood. Mm -hmm. uh, I bought her Toy Story, you know, individually. Yeah. And, and then I was like, all right, it looks like it's going to be cheaper to do it this way. Long story short, uh, you know, we've been, my my wife now is a big fan of Mandalorian. Uh, no spoilers, we, by the way, for people who haven't yeah, seen yeah, it. Not, yeah, no, but we've, we've been watching it every every Friday night. Uh, and, and that's actually what got us to to buy Disney Plus. Yeah. <laughs> the, the first couple of weeks, I think we watched Contagion. <laughs> neither of us did ever. What are you doing? <laughs> I, well, I, at, at that point, I was like, I wanted, I wanted to see how bad it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it put it that way. Yeah. And. Uh, so, yeah, I had never seen it. It was great. I mean, it's a great movie, and yeah. uh, but it's also it was, anxiety dri driving. Yeah, and but I, it was it was kind of good anxiety because I knew it wasn't it wasn't going to be that bad. I knew it was going to be bad, yeah. I, I, and that's as far as like all of this goes. You know, I've actually been. You know, my wife is tired of me saying it, but uh, I think we've been extremely lucky because uh, it could have been worse, and I think it's actually going to prepare us as a country for when something worse does happen because mm -hmm. it's just a matter of time before, you know, we, we demolished some cave in China and the, the, <laughs> the reservoir of coronavirus is, is loosed upon the earth. I think we'll be ready for it by then. Hopefully. I think hopefully. you've been watching 28 day, days later too often. I think. No, uh, no, no, the, the, no. The, the problem is I, I read uh, David Quammen's book uh, spillover. You know, I read that years ago it's a long long book but you know he basically laid out exactly how it has happened this mm. year and uh you know it's just a matter of time like it's gonna happen and like i said you know it it could have been way worse uh you know it's still really bad obviously yeah but it, it was at least something that we uh well, hopefully this will get us all on the same page, but yeah, we'll see. Hopefully. Anyway. Listen, this has been a very scary conversation. I thought this, I thought this <laughs> swamp lich, which lady was going to scare me, but oh, now you got me even more scared. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm like that. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I, I, I won't say I'm pessimistic, but man, I get pretty dark pretty fast. Oh my gosh. But I, I'm also, I'm also capable of, of great happiness. <laughs> well, listen, let's end it on the happiness, right? Uh, okay. Uh, sounds good to me. Thank you so much for uh, for talking with us. Thank you for drawing this. By the way, this Swamp Witch is my new favorite character of all time. So I appreciate you <laughs> creating her for hold us. On. I gotta hold on. I gotta draw the top of the bank. 
Yes. And then back here is Daytona International Speedway. And then somewhere in there is me. I see myself. Yeah, yeah. Your head can still be in the water. She'll get you. Sweet. Next. All right. I'll be lo I'll be looking for that in my mailbox. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Yes. I am immortalized. <laughs> I am immortalized. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm sorry that I got too fanboy on you, but it, dude, I really appreciate you drawing and hanging out with me, man. Uh, my pleasure, man. It's been fun. All right. Thank you. And hopefully, listen, when everything gets back to normal, I'll hopefully see you at some con soon. Yeah, definitely. I don't want to go back to Sideshow. I love visiting the, the place. It's just it's such a, uh, an inspiring, like just walking down those halls and seeing all the art yeah. and, and all the artists working. It, it's just, I've always loved it. Thank you, dude. Well, we appreciate you. Like, seriously. And I'm getting that thank print. You. So everyone, if you saw the link, fo follow him on all the, the social channels. And thank you so much, man. All right. Have my pleasure, man. Thank you. Have, Thanks for having me. Good, thank you. you. All right, everyone. Whew, I'm such a fanboy. I got really excited about all that. Um, thank you for joining us for Ink Tank. Uh, we have our next episode, which is December 11th, I believe. It's Friday, December 11th is our next Ink Tank Live. Uh, and just... Coming up, we have Geeksgiving is upon us. Geeksgiving is upon us. It's around the corner. It starts on the 19th. We already have deals for Black Friday going on, so make sure you're checking out uh, all the Black Friday deals. And listen, thank you all for joining me. I hope this was a, a fun time for you. And remember, don't forget to let your geek side show.